Well, coming out of the church, looks like there is uh, some some ruins right here. Let's see what they are. Maybe just like in like in the center of Rome, got these ruins. What do we got here, uh, Sai? So what do we got here, Sai? Looks like we have ruins right here in the middle of Mexico City. Right here, smack dab in Zocalo. It's a representation of the, the basin, which is Mexico City. And uh, you know, the volcano is, is in the mountains surrounding it. They say that uh, in 1521, right before the Mexicans were here, you know, this area was still inhabited by about 150 to 200,000 uh, inhabitants. Uh, connected on this, uh, this lake, connected to a, you know, in the middle of this lake, connected by a causeway. Here is a uh, closer representation of uh, sort of the island that. Uh, lived in the middle of this lake and you can see the causeways you know, sort of uh, going out to the sides of it which is which is how they got to this island and, and their home is in the city. The city of Tenochtitlan. Thanks for pronouncing that because I knew I couldn't pronounce it. Inside uh, in Tenochtitlan there was this uh, sacred precinct which uh, was the, uh, re sort of the, re the religious center of the city. There are 78 temples in this area, including the, uh, the Grand Temple that you can see in the center of the screen. It says, welcome to the pedestrian bridge over the Templo Mayor, the main temple. This bridge spans 700 years of Mexico City history. You're about to enter what was the holiest shrine in Tenochtitlan, one of the major cities of the ancient world. Let's go. Let's go. I don't know why we didn't know this was here, or we didn't realize it was quite this big and extensive. Um, I kind of think that we're going to be here for a while, and uh, we may not end up going to the Palacio Nacional today. Look at some of these things here. We're gonna to try to get into the ruins. All right, let's go. Museo del Templo Mayor. Let's go. It's 80 pesos to get in here to the beach. Probably get in for free if we uh, have gotten our you know, bomb card, but we didn't. Some artifacts here. Sort of in the underground area. Before we uh, go out and see the ruins. It turns out that it was a. Uh, the tradition here. And this tree was a very important archaeological find. It dates back to the uh, mid 1400s. And uh, with its round base here, it was at the uh, foot of the stairs. And uh, it, was, it was very sacred. structures here were built over a period of 200 years. 
years, and uh, as this uh, sort of cutaway shows, they were renovated and enlarged you know, to uh, seven times. And I also saw that uh, they were expanded out to the sides another six times. But uh, they just kept enlarging from the original base. With the uh, latest addition, side and about uh, know, maybe another 240 feet on another and it was about 150 feet tall so I'd say quite quite a structure too bad uh, uh, too bad it's now gone no longer I mean Cortez uh, uh, Contistador at sea in the last stage of the renovation of this uh, this is pretty interesting well, that's the pyramid in Teotihuacan Hispanic history is much more complicated than uh, we ever than we ever thought. You know, we always hear about the Mayans and the Aztecs, but uh, there seems to be some other groups there. And, uh, and even in this chart, uh, maybe maybe, uh, maybe it's because the Aztecs weren't in weren't in this area. Uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, you know it's pretty interesting. I just need to do more research about that to uh, really get a better understanding of who was where in Mexico and when before the Spaniards came in uh, 1521 here. So the people who lived here and built this were actually called um, uh, Mexicas and uh, they arrived in about 1325 after a long journey where they, uh, they were told a story that they should settle in a place where there was an eagle with a snake in its mouth uh, sitting on on a cactus in the middle of a lake and uh, that's what they found here and uh, that's where they settled they were here for 200 years until the, uh, until the Spanish came in the, in the early 1500s so this is what it looked like the, uh, the big island in the middle of the lake and uh, you can see some of the causeways uh, emanating out from it and, uh, the temple of my or so sort of sitting right in the center of this uh, city uh, here you can see some of the some of the levels and some of the expansions you know, that occurred. Wow, check this out, this serpent here. Wow, it's amazing that uh, they were able to uncover this. And uh, the program to uncover this only sort of began in 1991. So very, very recent. They're talking about the stage 4B as part of the uh, expansion. And it happened in like 1469 to 1481. Usually these uh, rounds of expansion were associated with new rulers. Each new ruler would come and sort of put their stamp on, on the big temple. So after the fall, the ten of Chitlan, in 1521 to the Spanish, uh, the Great Temple was uh, almost totally destroyed. In the end, uh, the houses of, uh, of two conquering Spaniards were built in its place. And just more stages here. There's stage four, phase four, built during uh, 1440 to 1469. And uh, 
This is a wastewater drainage system that was, uh, that was built around uh, 1900. Uh, cut through the Great Temple and uh, all the construction stages within that swath were destroyed. What a, what a shame, what a waste. it does provide us a way to uh, be able to walk on this. I guess they didn't realize what was under it. Yeah. Well, they should have when they, when they ripped right through it. Look, they built it uh, right, into, uh, right into the sides of this, this thing. from 1375, 1427, actually around 1400. But I think in 1991, they sort of, you know, started to uh, really, you know, excavate and preserve. Wow, I think just, uh, things massive, you know, it's really, really interesting to be able to see the cross section of all these sections that were that were built over a period of 200 years. That's fascinating. So it cost us uh, 80 pesos each to get into here, which is uh, I don't know, four dollars and thirty cents or so. Certainly well worth it. Yep. Certainly well worth it. Plus, I feel like we're contributing to the uh, preservation of this archaeological yeah. site. Yeah. This is uh, just a patio area that was built during uh, stage six. It's building This was a, a small area off to the side where some private ceremonies and meditation and rituals were held. And uh, it's called the Casa de las Aquilas, or the House of the Eagles. excavations in this site since 1981. You know, again, very, very extraordinarily recent for something that was built almost four or five hundred years earlier. And sitting, sitting right here in the smack dab center of uh, you know, one of the world's largest cities. This is an altar which has uh, 240 st stone skulls. It's on the north side of the Temple of Mayor. It's really, really interesting. And what do they say is uh, inside that thing there, sir? Inside of it? Yeah. Two wolf skeletons. Yeah. Representations of musical instruments. And a lot of other stuff. Yeah. This is uh, the Red North Temple. And, uh, Interesting, the, uh, the color red is still, you know, still visible and uh, certainly it's protected by some covering here, but uh, you know, it's really interesting to see that the, the color still, still exists in this day. As you can see right across the street, right across the way, is the uh, Metropolitan, Metropolitan Cathedral and uh, you know, recent investigations have led to the discovery several of the, uh, you know, of the structures from the Mexicas that are actually underneath 
that to this day are underneath that cathedral, which will, will you know, unfortunately uh, never be able to fully investigate. Even more often, what I'm going to say is the, this may be the south side here. Here's a bust of the, uh, the archaeologist who discovered the first designs of the Temple of Mayor back in like 1914 here. Yeah. This is an ocelot or jaguar. He carries a container for sacrificial offerings on his back. If you, if you look into his back, you can see it's actually carved out. Oh. He represents darkness and the earth. And he was symbolically the eagle's partner. Jaguar eagle. <laughs> They used to name the brave warriors. Sometimes. And to cap off our day, we're gonna have a, either an iced coffee, right, Lisa? At uh, Literary Four. 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 Right across the street, and um, or maybe I might have a cerveza. I don't know yet. I'll look at the menu, but uh, you can see it's like right overlooking. I mean, it's just, this is just uh, spectacular here, spectacular, and uh, you can actually see the uh, the Zocalo in the distance. Well, today didn't turn out like we planned, did Not it? Not at all. No, we, were, we were heading for the Palacio Nacional, and uh, it was closed for some undetermined amount of time for some unknown reason. Yep. So uh, we just wandered a little bit and uh, you know, just stumbled upon this, uh, this archaeological site, mm -hmm. this, uh, you know, the uh, Templo the Mayor. Templo Mayor. Yeah, the Templo Mayor. And which is the great temple of uh, a ruin that's located here called uh, Teotihuacan. And it's this massive community ruined many, many parts of it that we stumbled upon. And uh, how much time do we spend there? It's, it's like... Uh, we've been here for four hours. Almost hours. almost four hours yeah. we've been here. And, uh, you know, we got sort of got tired in the museum, so we hustled along the last four rooms there. But, uh, you know, we, we did see everything. It was, I thought it was, I thought it was a tremendous archaeological site. Too. And it, it was incredible. And just the fact that it's right here in the middle of the Centro Historico of Mexico City, right next to the Metropolitan Cathedral and the Zocalo. It's, it's just this massive, this massive archaeological site right in the middle of the city. It's just and, incredible. And, and it's only really started being excavated in 1978 or so. Mm -hmm. You know, someone found something in 1914. I couldn't, couldn't quite understand that, but uh, you know, really. They discovered this big old tablet. Yeah, and uh, they sort of went from there. Then 1991, they formed a, a it, it sort of kicked in an even higher gear. But uh, I think this museum has been here since 2006, and so it's all all really brand new here, and uh, you know, it's just it's just fabulous. And uh, you know, if you come to Mexico City, you, know, you should put it on your list of things to, uh, to to see. It was just much like uh, reminded me of uh, some of the stuff I've seen in Rome, which has been just recently excavated there too. Yep. But uh, reminded me of Pompeii, except it's not buried in that. <laughs> well, anyhow, thanks for watching our video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell to get notified when we have new videos out. Hasta la vista. Hasta luego. Adios, amigos.